It was only a few months ago when we had a first look at Cadmio, a visualization tool for the iPad. And now, it's Shaper's turn. We finally have the ability to assign materials to our objects and get some real-time rendering right within the app without having to jump to a separate application to do that. It was the next logical step for Shaper, and I'm glad it's finally here. But how good is Shaper's implementation? Do we still need Cadmio, or can we just use Shaper for renders? And how about the material quality? Is it any good? Let's see things in more detail. One of the things I love about Shaper is the clean and uncluttered UI. And thankfully, despite the new additions, the UI is still clear and concise and stays out of the way when it's not needed. The materials are organized into groups, so it's easy to find the one we need. There are eight groups in total, and all the major categories like plastic, metal, and wood are covered. The quality of the materials is quite high. The wooden section, for example, has a lot of variants with different versions of bright and dark wood, and with details that hold up under close inspection. The plastic section also has some nice looking materials. We can choose between glossy and more diffuse versions, and some plastics also have extra noise detail that adds to the realism of the material. The transparent plastics in particular look really good. I like all these small bumpy details and the foggy nature of them. Here for example, I use the plastic material to simulate the glass surface of the table. Shaper does have glass materials, but none of them looked as good as the plastic ones. So always try out different things even if it doesn't make sense. The results might surprise you. Shaper's materials are not the physically accurate materials we would get from an actual renderer, so cheating is the name of the game here. And if something looks good, just go with it. All materials offer some adjustability. We can easily change the color of the material or change the scale of the noise. Concrete, metal, plastic, they all have sliders that allow us to easily scale these details up or down. For plastics, the differences will be subtle, since we're talking about a tiny noise on the surface of the material, but for others like wood, the changes will be more extreme, since we're adjusting the overall pattern of the wood. I'm glad the noise slider is there and it's not overlooked, because these adjustments are quite important when trying to match the scale of the object and to make it look more believable. We can also adjust the background, and more specifically, the color of it. I think my favorite option is the ability to have the background completely transparent, because it allows us to easily adjust the object in post. Overall, Shaper's visualization feature feels solid, and you only need a couple of minutes to figure everything out. And the fact that we can do everything, modeling and visualization in one application is a welcome change. On the iPad, it's quite easy to get app fatigued because most applications do only a small portion of a task, so a lot of times users will have to hop in and out of applications just to complete a single project. So here's the million dollar question. Unfortunately, Shaper's implementation still has some room to grow. This is a version 1 feature, and even though it's capable enough, it cannot be Cadmio. Cadmio allows for a lot more flexibility, there are a lot more materials to choose from, and more options to fine-tune these materials to fit your needs. And most importantly, Cadmio has a lot of lighting flexibility. We're not just limited to a preset light setup that is fixed to a certain point in space. So let's go through these issues one by one. Let's check the material editing options first. In Cadmio, several materials like wood or marble allow us to change the orientation of the pattern. This is incredibly important when we're trying to simulate how an object is built in real life. For example, how a specific part would be cut out of a piece of wood. In Shaper, this option is missing, so the program is making the decisions for us. In most cases, the result is fine, but there will be cases where the program will fail us miserably. For example, let's take this simple wooden board. I've already applied the walnut material to it, and as you can see, this is not how a board is cut in real life. The wood grain should go along the length of the board and not the width. This is where having the ability to rotate the texture around would help a lot. The only way we can get the right result is by rotating the actual board. So if I rotate by 90 degrees, and I'll preview what that looks like, you'll see that the result is now correct, but that's definitely the wrong way of doing things. The texture should not be frozen in world space, because then we can get all sorts of weird results. Let me duplicate the board a few more times, and let's see what we've got. 
This is one of the benefits of having the texture in world space. We can have random looking wood planks without any user input. But that's the only benefit. It all goes downhill from here. Because the texture is in world space, the planks cannot have any other orientation. If I rotate them around 90 degrees, the result is wrong. And even worse, if I rotate them by any other amount like 20 degrees, then the result is even worse. So the whole texture projection in Shaper needs to be completely rethought. The world space trick can only be used in materials where the orientation doesn't matter, like the noise of a plastic material. There, things are fine because the noise is uniform. But in materials like wood and marble, having the texture in world space is not going to cut it. And speaking of wood and marble materials, here's another limitation. We cannot adjust the colors of the patterns. So if we want a brighter wood grains or slightly different shades of the colors we're provided with, we're kind of stuck. Of course, I understand that this goes to uh, substance territory, so that's a much more complex feature to tackle, but it's something that's really needed. Another thing I'm missing in the Shaper's materials is the ability to adjust the roughness of the material. They do offer variations, so we have for example a polished and rough aluminum material, but it would have been nicer if we could tweak this value ourselves. That would also help with scrolling, because it would reduce the number of materials on the list. In the plastic section, for example, we have ABS glossy and matte, polypropylene, opaque, matte, glossy and transparent. All these could be just one material, and the user could adjust transparency and glossiness with sliders. Cadmio does suffer to an extent from the same issues, but most of its materials offer some more flexibility. We might not be able to adjust the transparency, but the glossiness parameter is there. My biggest gripe though with the Shaper's visualization has to be the lighting functionality. There, we're incredibly limited. We have no way to adjust the lighting. We cannot rotate the light source, we cannot add a light source, or increase or decrease the intensity of the light. And we also don't have the ability to use an HDR image. Cadmium in this case is miles ahead. We have a big library of HDRs to choose from, we can load our own, and we can also rotate the lighting around until we get the exact look we're after. There are still limitations there, but we definitely have a lot more flexibility. With Shaper, we're stuck with a default lighting. I wouldn't mind that so much if the default light setup wasn't so weird. Let me show you what I mean. As you can see, the light comes from the back, so the front of the object is never lit. It certainly looks more dramatic this way, but the front of the object is never lit correctly. We can see this more clearly with the robot character. As you can see, the front is completely in shade, and it's not showcasing the object that well. The only way we can light the front side of the object is by once more <laughs> doing things the wrong way. Instead of rotating the light source, we have to rotate the object. So we have to go out of the visualization mode, make a selection of all the objects, rotate them around, and then go back into the visualization mode and see if the lighting is any good. If it's not, we have to repeat the whole process all over again. Apart from the fact that this back and forth between the visualization mode and the edit mode is annoying, it's also the wrong way of doing things. A simple ability to rotate the light source would have been a much better solution. Not to mention that if we want to preview things as we're building an object, it means that we have to constantly ruin the default state of the object. We have to repeatedly do this dance of rotating the object to see how it looks and then resetting it to continue with the modeling process. It's not the most ideal workflow. Cadmio does all of these things much better. We can rotate the lighting around, we can use our own HDRs, we can have a separate background from the HDR, and we can adjust the intensity of our lighting. It's a much more flexible solution. It does have its limitations, but if I had to pick between the two, I would always pick Cadmio's solution. There are also some other minor annoyances that I'm sure will be fixed in the future, but I did stumble on them on several occasions. For example, transparent materials and a transparent background don't play well together. For some reason, transparent materials are completely blank. Here, for example, the highlight and other small details of the eye are not saved at all, so the whole area is empty. Another annoying thing has to be the automatic coloring of the mesh based on the material. Shaper advertises it as a feature, but a lot of times I find it to be more annoying than helpful. In some cases it helps because you get a feel for how the object will look in the end, but a lot of times it's in the way, especially with dark materials. There it's impossible to work on the object. 
As far as I can tell, there's no way to get rid of the coloring aside from completely deleting the material. So it would have been nice if there was a toggle to quickly switch to the default view, similar to how regular 3D programs do it. I don't want to be overly critical of Shaper's new visualization feature because it's still a version 1 product, but I certainly would have liked to see a more fleshed out solution with fewer issues and bugs. Thankfully, the Shaper team is aware of these limitations and they plan to work on them in the future. And this is just the beginning. We have crafted this feature for almost a year, but we are still just getting started. With our bi-weekly updates, you will see visualization evolving rapidly. We will keep adding more and more materials and more and more features like depth of field effect, custom environments and predefined environments, custom lighting options, and even more. So I'm hopeful that we will see huge improvements very soon. For now though, I think that Cadmio is still the better solution. The results we can get out of it are much better and also much easier to control. But despite all the issues, I'm very happy to see Shaper tackling the visualization part of the equation. Because of what the team managed to achieve so far with Shaper, I'm confident that they will manage to deliver a great visualization tool as well. And when they do, Shaper will be a really awesome one-step solution for 3D users on the go. Anyway, I think that about wraps things up for this video. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.